that there are various causes. The, there are various causes of acne. One of the thing is, of course, the hormonal changes do not cause direct acne. They basically, whenever you have so, especially during the teenagers' time. So there are there are three to four stages where in your life where there are a lot of hormonal changes which happen happens in your body. One is the growth spurts which happens during your teenage time, right? Second is when a woman gets pregnant. There are a lot of hormonal changes which happens in the body. And third and the most important is the the menopausal phase where there is a lot of hormonal change which happens in the body. Now, what does this hormonal change do? They are not the direct cause of your acne. acne infection but in general it plays with the metabolic activity of your skin tissues and therefore the oil and the sebum secretion increases now when they clog onto your face when there is no oxygenation happening these are anaerobic infection right so this these are basically normal commensal the p acne bacteria does not come from outside they are the normal commensal of your sweat glands right okay. so then when you do not take care when you have uh, for example the excess oil secretion the excess p acne sitting onto your skin and you know there is no routine where you have the dust the pollution you are touching your face 10 times with your hands and you are transmitting other infection over there that is the time they get infected okay once they get infected they start multiplying rapidly and that is where you know you start having the acne the redness the irritation the itching and then you again scratch it further and you know it is basically i always tell my patients you know oh first it just started with one and you know then it started with multiple uh, acne eruptions what is the reason so i always love to give them an example that if you and the other person is sitting right and you know if uh, if you tend to hit the other person what the other person will do yeah the other person so, will hit you back uh, more strongly like, uh, right so that is how yeah. acne when you do not touch it but when you touch them when you you know you pick pick on them they kind to get more aggravated and multiply more fast so my mantra would be prevention is better than cure start early do take care you know or follow all the preventive regimen to actually prevent your curative regimen but once you reach there do seek help of your doctors and follow their medicines follow their guidance and i'm sure you know this is something which is so preventable you can definitely avoid the scars and the pits and the pigmentation which the acne causes okay uh, so like uh, i've seen uh, like i've seen so many this thing in my friends that uh, you know even they are getting uh, medical treatments even they are like uh, visiting their uh, skin specialist on a regular basis they still end up having scars so is there uh, no cure or uh, they cannot have permanently dissolve that problem like okay. no medical science can dissolve that problem permanently it is not like that it's basically the structural damage right so something for example if you are eating a pie and if someone has eaten a pie how would you get that eaten pie back so these commensals they feed on to your skin and when there is okay. infection when they have actually multiplied they have already caused a damage and usually they seek help when it is really flared up a lot and they start getting comments like oh my god this has really increased it starts affecting uh. their self esteem in fact to just give you the statistics uh, after depression acne is globally the second cause of suicide so you know you might laugh over it or we might think culturally or it is just a acne what people are getting so conscious but if you understand yeah, the seriousness right. of the issue the impact it can have in people's mind because when it spreads when it causes the the marks and the scars it can be really really you know a uh, moral uh, it can affect the morale and that is the reason you know so you should try to you know exactly. create that kind of awareness from the very beginning that's point number 1 point number 2 it's not that we do not have a solution even if you know uh, post acne once you're the once the, the the first aim of any doctor is to reduce the infection and the inflammation once we are able to do that that we have reduced the good amount of infection and inflammation we see what is the damage which was caused you know with this particular infection or the inflammation process we do have advanced treatments like laser the scar lasers which actually tries to boost the collagen see because whenever you have the damage that means the collagen was lost the hyaluronic acid was lost the connective tissue was damaged right so we have the lasers we have the peels we have the advanced treatment which can actually boost the collagen we can restore 
now of course you it, it all depends on the severity of the damage but you cannot say there is no solution we try to get the harmony as much as possible right and we also try to as doctors our role does not end only mm -hmm. by treating the patients we act as a best counselors for the patient you know to get the holistic approach in on the plate and that's how we explain the patient that this is a journey okay this is the tendency you have it is because of so and so reason it can be hormonal it can be you know your you know the, the lifestyle changes it can be because of some other metabolic disorders there can be hundred of things which can give rise to excess oil secretions onto yes. your body but uh, what we trying to do is along with the treatment we also counsel our patients right that they accept it well and then we harmonize the face and there is a satisfaction with the results we give them okay uh, so like uh, there are a lot of uh, products out there for acne or scars and stuff and uh, there are a lot of uh, natural remedies so uh, what you uh, tell your patients or what you will tell our audience that what should they go for or just going for the medical proper treatments sure uh, so honestly if you ask me i have no problem against the medical or uh, you know the natural uh, ingredients but you have to understand what do you mean by natural yeah. so a lot of my patients they come and tell me that doc you know what my my grandmother used to use turmeric and they she, she used to apply tomatoes and she would apply this this thing yeah. that thing basin and everything onto her face and you know she had such a beautiful skin and now you know i am i am seeking out this medicine and eating and applying i'm not understanding right so so okay so i think i put things in a very simple perspective okay there is no problem in the natural thing firstly but first two things are very important one thing is we cannot compare our lifestyle and the the purity of ingredients which were available in their garden when then when they were doing these treatments the grandmothers right we do not know the source oh, from yeah. where we are getting this natural that ingredients okay that's number one number two is that we ourselves do not know that what kind of skin we have whether we have oily we have dry we have combination we have sensitive skin so you know when you why would you want to take a risk for the most precious part of you which is your facial skin right uh, again if you think that okay fine i'm ready to experiment please go ahead but when you do not understand the science see again what is the difference now you say it medicine but if i i'll just give an example the same ahas alpha hydroxy acid which is present in your tomato or your lemon or any of your fruit derivatives is you know it is you know so for example one tomato and other tomato will not mm -hmm. have similar amount of you know acidic level or ahas and therefore you are taking a risk because you do not know what is your skin condition whether you have rosacea whether you have sensitive sensitivity so first of all i want to tell everyone who is attending one thing is that it is natural does not mean it is safe okay and natural does not means it is efficient okay why it is considered that way because again the source we have no idea and we have seen our previous generation using that because there were no facilities available at that time right so yeah if you compare pehle you know uh, women used to give birth at home majority of them right but even the death used to be higher today we have a facility yeah. available so safety becomes a very important parameter so what medical science does we take the same ahas from the natural ingredients we standardize that into one particular uh, you know ph which is very friendly to your your type of skin and then we give it to you as a medicine so what happens is we are very sure we as a doctor understand your skin we are still taking the same ahas you know which which is like you know uh, 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 from the natural ingredients but we are standardizing and giving it to you as a medicine now these are the things which if you understand the science about it you will not say and let's please get over the word chemical when they say chemical are chemical use kar rahe hain the food which you are eating is a chemical for your body yeah for okay? skin so, so it's chem like uh, so chemical is a term chemical does not mean petroleum and mica and cement and blah 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 okay chemical is a source okay which we derive from various things so even natural derivatives have this chemical inside them we are completely constitutes of certain chemicals and elements and nutrients right so what i want to say is please have your research done very well have a proper understanding and discussion with your skin as a doctor i will not say don't use this but what i will tell you is this is the type of problem you have if you have a infection okay you know and if you are going to ragodify your basin onto this this might aggravate right 
and this is what is the kind of awareness yeah. we need to create amongst our youngsters because they just follow you know one influencer trust me it is also a marketing gimmick a lot by telling natural but what exactly is natural okay i tell my patients you feel there is some products which has a very neutral ph like aloe vera apply it i have no problem it is coming for your skin but if you want to experiment think whether your face is worth yeah. to experiment right and tell me if you have if you really know people around you who have got severe infection kiska haldi chandan aur besan se theek hua hai kisi ka nahi hota because infection does not get treated with this way right okay so this is we have to have that understanding and science behind everything that is why it is called evidence based medicine because there is a lot of studies yeah, and research yeah especially to i are, think uh, teenagers yes teenagers adults lot yeah. of people right you people don't understand that this is a problem which needs to be addressed and later on you have to see there is a reason why people have studied 8 to 10 years right to guide you well so please go ahead and seek interventions uh so uh, ma'am uh, what are the other health uh, reasons for acne like can it be a, any underlying disease major disease that is just reflecting on your face as a form of acne see acne is only one form but today you have to remember that your outer skin or outer appearance is a reflection of your internal well being okay disha it can't be you know you cannot say that it is not related everything which is happening will have your effect on your skin so one of the common thing when you when it comes to hair fall when it comes to eruptions there are stress based eruptions right this is not funny this is real because when the cortisol increases right it actually plays with your entire cycle so imagine your body as a full fledged machine which is interconnected and intertwined with each other one thing gets affected it is not going to be focal problem it will affect other thing as well and but how will you get to see from outside is only through your skin your nail and your hair see uh, one of the so why people do not understand you know when the problem happens on the skin and hair is ki isse koi marta nahi hai but you know you have to under, the vitality is not a question when it comes to skin and hair but it definitely yeah. is the reflection of your internal well being right so if someone has thyroid and thyroid is again metabolic disorder a lot of your functions gets affected there is a slowness sluggishness or there is hyperthyroidism in in any cases you know your body will give you a signal by you know either getting eruption or you looking dull or you getting pigmentation or you having hair fall so these are your in fact we are blessed to have some parameter or some indicators where we can see there is something is wrong so that is why we do not limit ourselves only to you know you have come with a problem we will give you a solution it is a holistic approach where we understand our patients we take history we see if there is any metabolic disorder like thyroid blood pressure diabetes or any other infections you know where you know so give us if, if if someone has jaundice right we start seeing the skin has become pale and yellowish if someone is looking dehydrated you can immediately see if someone has not slept at the night you can easily make out right so skin is your mirror it cannot be just yeah. like you know tiktok one problem one solution approach it is a holistic approach and skin is a science you know i mean and i mean something which gives you so much of confidence and it is multilateral approach so definitely you would never ignore any 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 kind of uh, illness or any kind of uh, underlying disease or disorder see disease and disorder disorder can be something which is also temporary right disease is something which is long standing acute disease or chronic disease disorder can just be a simple break up disorder can just be simple family stresses right or it can be too much of traveling and too much of hustle bustle you know you want to achieve your targets and goals and everything so when you come to your doctor your your when we assess your skin we have to consider all the thing which is happening internally we have to counsel them to restore your internal balance along with following our regime and that is why it is always a combination of internal as well as external so it cannot be separated okay uh, so like summing up all of it uh, what are especially in this city life what are the uh, basic tips for a good skin care you'll give like <laughs> a basic tip that everybody universally can follow it <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, so first tip would be don't follow anything blindly. You know, when you see, you know, we in today's generation, we are very much influenced by social media and advertisement campaigns. So, you know, everybody who is playing an influencer, they're doing it for a purpose. It is also a part of the living and there's nothing wrong about it. Right. But we all, especially city people I'm talking, we all are very yeah. educated people. Right. And, you know, it is very important that either with your own doctor set or your medical professional, there are articles available or you know there are proper forums you know who actually gives you right kind of information first do your research without before following any 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 just blind things right because it can sometimes be more harmful many people are just doing it because usse koi side effect nahi hota but effect ho raha hai efficacy and safety are two very important parameter so you have to understand trust me a lot of this campaigns because they do not have any side effect they're still following it but efficacy is a big question mark which you need to take into consideration that's point number one point number two is please start early it's never too late okay always make sure that you have a good skincare routine in place always remember whatever you invest in it grows like whatever yeah i want to like uh... specifically yeah specifically uh, i want to know like even uh, people of my age want to know like what is a skin care routine like sure, perfectly sure. like a one skin care routine <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying yeah. to tell. Yeah, uh, I was just telling you the same point, Desha. Whatever you invest in life, it grows. Whatever you ignore, that goes. Okay, it is grows and goes, right? So you have to start investing your time, investing a routine yeah. for yourself for your skincare. Now, do not uh, blindly follow your CTM routine, which is cleanse tone moisturizer. You have to first thing is understand what is your skin type. Skin type can be variable. It can be your dry, oily, or you know, it can be combination. it can be sensitive skin type it can be dry oily combination there are various things which actually has you know skin uh, assessment tool you know there are certain uh, home assessment tools also which you can use once you have understood then you have to realize whether there is any problem or your skin is fine matlab you know you are fine with it that means you are very confident about and you love your skin the way it is if you are okay. comfortable in your skin whatever it is whether it is color whether it is your acne whether it is your this then you should have a different plan but if there is a problem which actually concerns you then the approach has to be very different you need to visit someone who is qualified enough to guide you right okay and understand and follow things under the guidance okay once you achieve a harmony once you achieve a good skin then you can you are free to do whatever you want to also try other things because it's all in your hand but uh, if you ask me anybody you know the morning and the night routine is very very essential make sure that you wash your face twice a day okay and cleanser should always be milder because the whole purpose okay. how much ever you say it is a brightening cleanser it's a blah blah cleanser it's a anti acne cleanser the whole purpose is to remove the excess as oil dirt and impurities from your skin to make your skin feel fresh and hydrated and you know the pores are open so your skin can breathe right so choose the right cleanser which actually does this job right that's number yeah. one point second thing is in the morning time how much ever you want to say sun block is something which you can never 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 ignore sun block is not something which gets absorbed into your skin but it acts as an umbrella so whenever you apply a sun uh, block onto your skin it forms a film which does not let the harmful uv rays gets absorbed into your skin right so that is very and it gives you a good reflection so even when you apply anything above that okay it does not have any makeup or stuff you know it does not let your skin get affected third thing is that okay. uh, moisturizer is something which is very tricky it depends what kind of skin you have first you understand the difference between the oil and the water you might have good oil content into your skin but do you really have a good water content is a question mark so your moisturizer or your hydrator you know it acts like a water repair onto your skin it is not basically your oil you might so you many people say oh my god i can't use moisturizer my skin is already too oily you know it will give me a breakout so you need to be very oily, sure what yeah. kind of what kind of hydrator is the right word to use because you know what your skin is the last place where if there are a lot of patient who will tell me ma'am i use so much i drink so much of water but i still feel my skin is dry or uneven what is it i don't have that glow onto my skin so you have to understand from vitality perspective skin is the last uh, priority right so even from the system whatever you eat and drink it first goes to your other part which is more vital from living and death perspective the last place where your water and the nutrient reaches is your skin 
skin and your hair that is why it's very important that you are hydrated well you hydrate enough and also have a topical application which helps to hydrate and form that balance repair of your water levels right so yeah these are the three things which you can never ever ignore night time is the time when you know you are in ma mainly in a relaxation mode and you do not have to travel and you do not have to face the pollution and stuff so you should always uh, do the repair work at night so when it when it comes to repair depending on what condition you want to address if you want to address something like uneven skin tone or pigmentation you should have uh, you know skin brightening or uneven uh, the even corrector uneven corrector application similarly if you have acne it should be something which is you know uh, the antibacterial in nature which will actually correct your and decrease the uh, will act on the uh, the bacterial count and the marks in the scar so yeah and along with that i always tell my patient that hydrator is something which should also be applied at night time so this would be a general idea but as i told you uh, there is nothing called a generalized rule it's always individual so do follow okay. your individual assessment and then approach yeah that was a good piece of information uh, coming to my uh, next uh, sort of agenda that we have and it's about anti aging th therapies so like looking young is a is is a thing in india i, I think all around the world so yeah. what are your uh, like what what are your recommendations and uh, so <laughs> medical Always. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, firstly, Disha, uh, I have a different concept about the anti-aging. In fact, I'm specialized into anti-aging medicine. You know, anti-aging okay. is a very, very oh, beautiful yeah. science, right? And uh, you have to understand aging process for that. So, it is not aging is not when you uh, cross a particular age, whether it is thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. Every day since we are born, we are aging each and every day. Okay. But when do we start taking care is very important, right? So here also prevention is better than cure is very important formula. You know, uh, when you start taking care early in your life, when you start having good hydration, when you start having good sun protection, where you can prevent the sun uh, damages, you know, then you will prevent the early signs of aging. So early signs of aging usually starts, you know, between 25 to 35. That is the age group when the early signs of aging starts. And what is the early signs of aging? See, people just say lines and wrinkles. Your anti-aging is not limited to your lines and wrinkles. When you start seeing dehydration, uneven skin tone, freckles onto your skin or sun spot sun damages you know uh, any of these things or dark circle and then it progresses it progresses you lose the collagen and the important hyaluronic acid from the inside of the skin then is the time when you start seeing the early lines and the wrinkles and if you still ignore it you start losing the tissue volume and it starts sagging and you start seeing the jowl and the heaviness and ultimately you see the entire uh, aged skin aged uh, not only in terms of elasticity and firmness the skin quality but you also see a lot of sagging volume loss and a lot of things to be corrected right so this is how the natural aging is a facial shape determines a lot about the aging process because you know we all have when we are younger we have like a inverted triangle which is like our upper face is broader and the lower face is narrower but as we age this dynamics changes and it becomes a proper triangle where our broad becomes our base becomes broader and our this becomes narrower so this is how the aging <laughs> concept works so i i think that um, aging again anti aging medicine something which you need to start early start taking care and then you can there is nothing in this world which can reverse or stop aging process because this is natural and we have to accept it but what you can do is you can definitely delay it you can definitely look best at your age right if someone is 30s they need to look best in 30s if someone is 40s 50s 60s look harmonized look fresher look you know healthier this is what sums up for me anti aging anti aging is not only wrinkles and folds <laughs> that's it yeah like that to we see journey in the like 40s or 30s people journey and then they start thinking about aging process and stuff uh, so like uh, so your advice is to go for early medications for anti like aging no. process 
Disha, it's not early medication. Always remember, we as doctors promote health. I am promoting skin health, not medication. It is about early care, early prevention, right? Early regime. These are the words I would believe rather than early medication. Medication, kya ap loge? Today, for example, even if you visit me, a person mm-hmm. like you know, a, a young girl like you who is very beautiful, I will just advise her. Listen, you know what? I can see a little bit things here and there, little unevenness. You are so beautiful, but you need to have a lot of hydration into your skin. You know. You You need to have something which is actually not your genetically. It looks like your lower face will be heavier if you do not take care. Do a good exercise in routine. You cannot ignore lifestyle, right? So you know we are just the booster addition to your lifestyle. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't think so. Medication is the word. It's about the right guidance and the right care, and of course, when needed, the right intervention in terms of either medical or non-medical. the intervention can be you know physical exercise as well so intervention can be medical as well as non medical uh now uh coming to the next uh agenda that is uh hairs like hair fall and uh, <laughs> premature graying which is very uh, significantly seen in today's times yeah yes yes so uh what are the uh, causes of what are the causes of uh, early hair fall and how one can prevent by for uh, by in their lifestyle okay so the question is about premature me? yeah the question is about premature aging yeah. or hair fall premature uh, graying or hair fall uh, i think we can start with the hair fall and then come into gray <laughs> Okay, fine, no problem. Uh, okay, so firstly, you have to understand a hair fall can be, uh, you know, just the acute hair fall, or it can be chronic hair fall. Acute hair fall is something which has happened because of something which has immediately ha- happened in your life. It can be as simple as I told you, a office stress, or a exam stress, or you know, your pregnancy stress. or you know someone who has met with an accident recently you know or some illness which has happened like a typhoid or a viral infection like the best example would be covid right you know covid is a viral infection so what happens is when uh, when uh, any kind of acute activity or acute stress happens in your body it actually pushes the three cycles into your hair it it actually gets it into the falling phase so our hair has got three cycles one is the falling uh, cycle one is the growing cycle and one is the stag- in cycle now what happens is whenever there is a acute stress okay. a lot of your hair from the stagnant cycle automatically goes into the falling cycle right and that is where you suddenly start seeing a lot of hair fall so and that is even it is true with covid also any viral infection or stuff also so in such case situation you have to first understand that this is temporary okay second thing is whatever hair has fallen because of this shift of cycle will be restored because they will again grow into the growing phase okay and third thing is that uh, you know yeah. uh, you need to just do a basic care without taking any stress just do the basic uh, you know the scalp nutrition care which is enough now when when we come to the chronic hair fall chronic hair fall is something which has been there is a underlying cause there can be either any disorder or disease or you know a uh, uh, unharmonious thing which is happening in your body which is resulting into chronic hair fall it can also be hereditary if it is there in your family the thinning of the scalp or the hair fall so in female we call it as female androgenetic alopecia or in males we call it as male androgenetic alopecia it runs in the family so if someone's parent has thin hair you can't expect them to have a luscious and beautiful and thicker hair uh, or you know it's a, hereditary plays a very important role similarly you know if someone has got blood pressure diabetes thyroid or any other internal you know which is chronic disorder or ailment that also can result into hair fall because as i told you what happens is whenever you have some internal problem it consumes a lot of nutrition and it consumes a lot of things into your body and it does not let it penetrate into your outer area which is your skin and hair so you know that is the reason you start experiencing slow and steady hair fall now one question which many people have asked me is that you know what listen i know the baldness and the scantiness runs in my family but my dad and my mom lost it when they were 50 60 70 but now i am only 30 or i am only 25 and i am only 28 why am i losing hair why i am having this thinner why am i becoming bald right again the same thing comes their lifestyle and stress levels are very different 
so if you have a habit of smoking or alcohol or you know you're like you do not sleep well we are all social media addicts or we have any early uh, disorder obesity or anything which is you know metabolic in nature the same thing which are genetic or hereditary can have early intervention right so if diabetes runs in somebody's family and that, you know if you do not take care of yourself and if you eat a lot of sugar and if you are or if you have become obese yeah. you know or so you will manifest it much earlier than what your previous generation did similar thing is with hair fall also so yeah acute hair fall and chronic hair fall disha uh, now coming about the graying premature graying uh, let me just put this fact straight on the table your graying is determined by genes okay so there is no control when and who is going to be graying it can be as early as 20s 30s and 40s but there is a condition when it happens before 20 or 19 years of old that means you know there is a very severe nutritional deficiency which we try to correct by giving calcium pantothenate right so that is something else but even if you are getting early in 20s 30s 40s this is genetically predetermined that this is how it's going to happen so what you can do is currently there is no medicine which can actually prevent the graying of the hair the one who discovers will become a millionaire but right now it is not there i keep definitely so i uh, like there is no reversal of uh, if there is there are gray hair the premature gray hairs there is no reversal there is no reversal because there are a lot of myths and a lot of oils available ki Honestly, you know, yeah, yeah. These are myths, yeah. but what you can do is, as I told, it also applies for your hair. If you take a good care of them, if you are having a right kind of diet, you have right kind of exercise. Now, why exercise is so important is because it actually improves the entire circulation of your body. It when when it does that, the top to bottom, the blood reaches even to the peripheries, you know, which is your hair and the skin. Therefore, exercise plays a very important mm-hmm. role. And also, you know, people say, "Oh, I eat a lot of good diet," but you do require external supplementation because uh, it is not always the uh, the consumption but the assimilation which matters so you might eat the right stuff but how much of the nutrient is getting absorbed by your gut is also plays a very important role therefore we prescribe something called as multi nutrient therapy for our patient now this multi nutrient therapy is uh, not the previous one where we used to give all the nutrition together there is a concept called as cyclical nutrient therapy where we have specific nutrients like your folic acid your by uh, Well, your calcium, uh, your your uh, your vitamin B twelve, your proteins, your amino acid. So there are a lot of nutrients okay. which are complementary. There are a lot of nutrients which are antagonist. So previously, we doctors used to give everything on the table, but now we realize that fact and we give specific tablets on each day, which will actually help the patients better, right? So yeah, uh, these are the things which we can do to delay it, but. you cannot say that you know your gray hair will not come because it is pre it is genetically predetermined disha okay okay uh, so now i'll take some uh, journal set of myths and questions uh, regarding this that uh, like uh, people talk about fairness creams and so are they like really worth it or do they actually work Uh, so uh, as a doctor i never promote a uh, lightening skin lightening i am a core believer that you have to love your skin love your color okay uh, because this is something which is very very close to my heart in fact we have worked on a campaign with hul where uh, you know oh. we have removed the term of fair and lovely you know so it has now become glow and lovely so i think uh, uh, for a youngster you know i mean this is what we need to work upon we need to change this thing that fairer is beautiful right because it's skin color which you are born with it is something which you have inherited in your life so first advice would be just cherish it love it this is something which is yours and it does not require any validation from an outsider so that's number one point number two point will be when there are conditions where because of some uh, reasons there is unevenness or there is pigmentation there are lentigens there are sun spots there are melasma there are different conditions you know where you can have unevenness and i feel every uh, human has a right 
to look even healthy skin is what my uh, idea would be so even if we all are brown so today we someone will be light brown which we consider in india as fair someone will be dark brown but we indians are brown people so let's accept this fact first of all and there is no end to this you know today you might think you are the fairest but if you go somewhere else someone else is more fairer so first of all just get out of that particular thing right so as i told you if there is a concern if there is a problem we need to address it and definitely we have solution for that where we have uh, topical applications you know which can be non steroidal basis and steroidal basis where you know which can really give you good result but again i would advise you don't blindly follow because you know on instagram you see ki this oil makes you fair or this serum makes you fair uh, yeah. i don't know what do they mean by that in fact uh, legally medical legally there should be a strict action but now sadly in our country money is more important than you know the the compliance part of it uh, but don't go via these myth these are just a myth nothing in this world can make you fairer but what they can do is they can restore your natural and your best skin uh, melanin a uh, formation that is the pigmentation and that is happens only when there is even skin color your skin is hydrated when your skin has glow on to it and that will happen only with a good skin care routine right so yeah you there are uh, topical applications which can help you when there are concerns but overall if you are seeking out to become more fairer this is very lame and i think uh, we as medical professional do not promote that yeah Uh, uh are like uh, tattoos and uh, having that stuff on the skin is safe okay so <clears throat> tattoo is a skin pigment right so there are two components into it the pigment and the needle so if you see uh, if you are you if you are very sure of the source and the authenticity because there are a lot of uh, you know variation in the qu- the quality of the pigment used so you need to be very very sure you know that what pigment quality has been used because sometimes the pigment going the inside the, and you know there are certain something called as allergic test you know where your if if someone is good someone any who is a good artist they will always recommend you that let's do an allergic test either in one and either in your hand or somewhere where we make sure that you don't you're not allergic to that because many people are there and they end up being in the hospital but if your pigment is safe okay then it is not a problem you know you can go ahead with that and second important component is the needle usage so you need to be very sure that the needle is absolutely sterile and you know it is not something which has been repeated because uh, one of the sources for a lot of stds and you know uh, blood disorders can be through needle so anywhere where needles are involved please make sure that they are an expert you know you are completely checking it they are opening the packs in front of you you have a right to disclosure never lose on your right whether they are your doctors whether they are your tattoo artists or whether they are anybody who are playing with your skin and body please use your rights and if the person understands the science part of it they will always love to explore and explain you in details so this would be my advice regarding tattoo okay uh, so uh, like other facial products makeups and lipsticks i mean uh, are they safe or what are the even if people are using it what are the right way and what are the limitations to it okay uh, so see there is a reason why cosmetic industry is booming currently you know because we all want to look at your perfect right so that's one of the aspiration created yeah. by the beauty industry uh, so one thing first thing which i would tell you is that you can love anything in this world you can love cosmetics you can love lip color you can love concealers but the first thing is be comfortable in your own skin like today if even if you are not you should not be so dependent on the outer appearance or the outer cosmetic application that you lose your confidence of you know who you are right and that will come when you do the basics right when you have a right skin care routine see even the makeup will look good only when your skin is healthy if you have blemishes if you have pigmentation yeah. if you have eruptions you will look more bumpy and cakey so there is no makeup see uh, for how long will they conceal it right even the makeup if even if you apply a foundation that will settle well onto your skin or it will be more smooth when your skin texture is smoother right and uh, see for all the youngsters 
your if your base of the building is not strong your building will collapse ultimately so if your skin is not mm-hmm. hydrated if it has any problem like acne pigmentation dark circle and you know if, the, if there are pores onto your skin and you know uh, ignoring all these things if you are focusing only on cosmetic that would not be a right approach but of course as i told you uh, cosmetics are integral part of our lives whether it is your life my life we have any functions we want to present somewhere you know it is something yeah. to just add a finishing touch it's basically like a painter you know where you know you have a blank canvas and you want to fill colors to just give it more life so that is one thing but if your painting is not good or if your base work is not good how much ever amount of makeup you're going to be applying it will not reflect onto your face right so uh, you ha- and again while choosing the makeup make sure that uh, you know there are a lot of beautiful brands who have a lot of science behind it so go with something which has science and evidence again and again because uh, just going by uh, with the marketing gimmick can again be experimenting with your face right so your face is very precious because this is this what represents in totality who you are your expressions your smile your eyes your nose your each and every fe- uh, feature they might not if when they see you they might not remember you with your hands and your legs and how your overall what you were wearing but they definitely do remember you with your smile and your expressions and the kind of skin you have so yeah uh, my advice to you would be only go safe you know and uh, be very sure about the science and never ever ignore the basics which is your skin care routine uh now the i think the final last question and it's a very a little bit specific that people get a uh, skin lesions due to stds and they uh, generally hide it or uh, they think like they are journal blisters so how serious that can be the std is very serious the reason is it is not only for the person who has it but anybody who comes in uh, sexual contact with the person right so yeah. uh, and that is because there is a lot of stigma around it in fact one of the person who can come and talk about j- only about the stds because this is a complete separate study which is done in a lot of details so the uh, first thing is we need to make it it's okay that is it's okay because most of the time most of the time it's not their mistake when you anybody has stds someone would have hidden it or it would have been through some of the needles or you yeah. know so it there are there are only two to blood the blood cause the needle cause or the sexual contact there is no other reason which is there right so first is remove the stigma around it you know it does not spread by touching or meeting people you know so please and and if you do not remove the stigma around it how will they be comfortable to share and then this will keep on spreading from one yeah. person to another which is more dangerous right and also when their immunity themselves is low that is why they have contracted it so my thing will be first thing is that remove the stigma understand that anyone can get it if it was hidden from them so you have to there's something called as responsibility right so it is your responsibility like i know during corona times also i met some stupid people who are like are yaar mujhko to ho gaya why should i care for the others now you know so uh, you know as a humanity this is a very human level question disha i think each one of us have onus on ourselves to create a better community and that will happen when there is better acceptance of people there is no stigma around it you know when you treat them like normals right so automatically they will be more transparent to things and that is the only way out the education and the transparency and the trust so if we have this in place i think uh, things will be much better uh, that was a really nice and informative session a lot of information for all of us uh thanks for joining us doctor and uh, at the end i would uh, like to tell our uh, viewers that uh, health jankari is uh, uh, all about uh, addressing uh, normal problems making problems uh, making awareness about normal day to day issues and uh, we have a lot of experts in, and one we have it today about skin uh, good skin and uh, we'll definitely catch up you on next session thank you everyone thank you so much thank you doctor